Now in grids, we allow any entity definition to have a physics object. That is, an entity doesn't inherit from physics object and isn't required to have one either. Now for those daring digital souls who want one, they'll need to actually create a handle to the physics body and keep it around over time so that they can manipulate it. Before they can do that, of course, they have to first fill out the entity definition object and pass that out to the gphysicsengine.addbody, which we've coded up previously. Now for grids, every object in the world is a box, so our description is pretty easy to generate. First off, we pass the x and y position values to the class, alongside the half width and half height of the box, representing its size. In addition to that, Box2D expects some specific surface properties, such as dampening, friction, things along those lines, so we go ahead and set them here as well, if we want them. 